guys and welcome back to my channel for another video. Today we are going back to basics. That's me. The professor is here with me as well, like always. This video is actually at the request of one of you guys. Alyssa, thank you so much for all the love and support that you show this channel and also thank you so much for today's request. We are going to go through the brush basics. N no. Um. brush with death. Today's basics is going to be all about eye brushes. Now there are so many that exist in the world and um, I know that it can be really confusing and overwhelming you know when you're first getting into makeup or you know if you just like walk into a makeup store and you're looking at all the brushes and you're like I don't know what I need to do with what and where and why. Since this is a makeup basics playlist, we are going to be focusing on the two most important brushes that I always tell my clients that they should have in their kit um, because I think that you can do like a, a multitude of things with just two brushes. I am someone who firmly believes that your tools should be multifaceted in their use. It is less to clean, it is less to carry. Boom. And then we're also going to be talking about some accessory brushes as well, things that I think help like elevate that eye game or your eye look, all that jazz. So that is what we are doing today, guys. I hope that you enjoy the video. <laughs> Firstly, there are the parts of a brush. So you have right here, thank you. So you have the bristles right here. This little metallic or silvery piece right here is called the ferrule. No, not feral, ferrule. That is followed by the handle, which is usually where you find like the little logo and then what kind. Brushes most commonly get their name from the shape, size, density, things like that of the bristles. So that's usually what I like to focus on whenever I'm picking out new brushes. I'm like, oh, I think this one will fit here or I want to use this for that. Very detailed instructions, I know. So even your brush bristles are gonna be broken down into different parts. For example, this one right here. So the very tippity top of your brush is called the point. And then here on the wider, sometimes it's curved depending on like the look of the brush. Um, this is considered the belly. It is thicker, like a belly. I'm sure if you guys have been here before um, and watched any of my other tutorials, you guys are accustomed to me saying like the point or the belly of the brush, just differentiating between like loading a brush here on the tippity top, which will give you a different payoff than say if you were to load it on the belly. I try to make sure to include those in my instructions for like my normal beauty tutorials because I find it incredibly useful to know not only like what brush you're using or the kind of brush you're using, but also like where to place the product on the brush so that you can more more easily put it on your eye in the way that you are aiming for. So moving into the two most important brushes that I think everybody should own. That is going to be a fluffy brush. She looks like this. You can see that the ends are nice and fluffy, as the name implies, and also a flat packing brush. I think that these tools are incredibly multifaceted and I'll talk about like each of their uses in a second. But first I want to also mention that because my eyes are so large and deep set, when it comes to like my personal fluffy brushes, what I prefer for me is to actually have them ever so slightly tapered. So this is an example of a tapered fluffy brush, meaning that here at the very tippity top, you can watch the bristles go from being nice and like feathered out here in the middle, they're a lot thicker, and then it slowly tapers out into a more defined point. I think a traditional fluffy brush is amazing for like displacing your color, diffusing it, getting it like on and out there. What I love about the tapered one though is that I do find it's ever so slightly more versatile because it's easier to control here on the point exactly where you place product and you can get like a really defined like line or angle as well as get that nice like soft blown out kind of look. The truth is that I can knock out one of my looks with just a tapered fluffy brush and I love to use the same brush for multiple colors, multiple steps, simply because um, it's less to clean, it's slightly faster, 
blessed to clean part of that, so that's actually what really gets me, okay? It just is. And when it comes to using your brushes, you are going to find the biggest difference in like your color payoff, the opacity, um, you know, the overall desired like shape or look based on your hand placement, the motion you do, and the amount of pressure you apply all of which we are about to talk about. But first, let me talk about this flat packing brush. I love a flat packing brush because I also think that these are incredibly versatile. I know a lot of people like to carve out their eyebrows with it. I personally always use it for like metallic shades because it's the easiest way to like build up those colors without getting like glitter or a bunch of like metallic like reflect or fallout here on the face. I also love these to cut a crease. You can do your under eye concealer. They are really multifaceted in their use. Now we're going to talk about your hand placement. The further back you hold on your handle, the more soft your touch is going to be. Whereas if you were to choke up here on the ferrule, you have very specific placement in mind. You have a lot of control over that. When I first went in to do this eye look, I started here with this orange color and I was pretty far back here on my handle so that I could get a nice soft blown out kind of like color payoff from that. Whereas when I use the tapered blending brush here to really work that color into my crease, I did choke up on it a lot more simply so that I could have more control over the exact placement of that color. And then as far as the motion that you guys use when you are playing with color, you have a couple of different options depending on what you are going for. I often talk about scrambling eggs. That's the most common. It's a soft circular motion and you can really like buff out or diffuse a color using that. If you hold farther back on your handle while doing that soft scrambled egg motion, then you will see a prettier fade. I also talk every now and then about a windshield wiper motion, and that is specifically when you're trying to get a color exactly where you want it, in the same way that you would like draw zigzags on a piece of paper. When I had my accessory brush earlier and I was like really trying to work that purple shade right there in the crease, what I did was I did go back and forth, tiny, tiny little windshield wiper motions back and forth across that entire space. So scrambled eggs, windshield wiper, and then a stipple or pack. Stippling can be used for a couple of different things. I almost always use a stippling motion when I am packing a metallic shade here on the lid, simply because metallic shades, and especially with like a flat packing brush, you're not gonna get a good color payoff if you try to scramble eggs with it. It's just, that's like scrambling eggs with a knife. It's a lot of work. We ain't trying to do that, you know what I mean? And I use the term stippling versus the term packing like back and forth. Usually it's just in reference to like what exactly I'm doing. So I will call it packing if I am using a metallic shade and I will call it stippling if it's like the first initial swipe with my fluffy brush. You will notice that I stipple a lot of my colors first to get off the first wave of like any excess product, any like build up, and then I switch to that soft circular motion. I do the same thing with a metallic shade. I always pack my color on so that it stays exactly where I put it and I can build up its vibrancy. I also cannot recommend enough that you use a stippling motion whenever you go to play with like a pressed pigment. This is pretty much all pressed pigments. So whenever I go to apply these, if you've seen any of those videos, I never really go like full scrambled egg. I always use a stippling motion to build up the vibrancy of that color, get it exactly where I want it. And then once I feel comfortable about like the color's opacity here on my lid, I will switch to that soft scrambled egg or windshield wiper motion to kind of like soften the edge of wherever it is that I've packed that color. And if you're someone who has been playing with colors and maybe hasn't been happy with like the payoff or the way that it's been blending, that may be something that helps you a lot. So a couple of accessory brushes that I love a whole heck of a lot, and I actually used these earlier as well. I love with my whole heart a little smudge brush. They may not look incredibly useful because they're so tiny and dense, but as someone who loves to pack shadow here on my lower lash line, I think that this is such a gem. I also love to use this brush to really define a cut crease. And I do talk about this brush a little bit more in that cut crease tutorial. 
Another brush I love with my whole entire heart is going to be this little guy right here. This is a detailed tapered brush. It's not quite as fluffy as our initial tapered fluffy brush. Whenever I want the color on this lower lid to be like super blown out, usually before I use that smudge brush, I will take something quite like this and just run a color pretty messily down here along the bottom. Um, it's nice and tiny, so it's not gonna get too far down for me, although I don't know if I'd really mind that either because I'm all about that like 90s grunge. I love that makeup style. You can also use a tiny little stiff brush like this. Um, usually I have one that's like ever so slightly more round. I call it a pom-pom brush and I do have that, but I think, I think it's currently dirty. And so it's like, I also love to use this to pop a little bit of inner corner highlight. And that pretty much covers like all of the brushes that if you're just like starting out in makeup or you're trying to, you know, elevate your eye game a little bit, I think all of those are incredibly useful and that actually rounds out a kit pretty well. I hope that you guys have found today's video useful. Drop me a comment down below letting me know not only anything else that you guys would like to see, but any clarifying questions that you may have. I'm gonna include the five brushes that I talked about specifically in the description box of this video, but you guys use whatever kind of brushes that you want, whatever brushes are most accessible to you. You may even have something at home that fits the description of some of these that you can work with as well. I love you guys with my whole entire heart. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all having a very fun, safe, healthy day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.